Hello everyone and welcome back. This morning it was 33 degrees. I think the high is 47 or something today. First day I put my long johns on. <laughs> and we're going to call it quits for the garden because this whole week at night the temperatures are going to be in the 30s. Not below freezing every night, but uh, one or two of the nights are going to be below freezing and during the day it's going to be in the mid 40s. A couple of them are going to be 50. But uh, that, the garden's not going to grow anymore. So I want to get everything pulled out of here. Get those potatoes dug up that should have been dug up a month ago. So that I can eventually move this fence out of here. So I can push snow easier this winter. Picking all of this uh, squash and stuff, most of that will go to the chickens. But yesterday we pulled a couple out of here. Melissa did a veggie bake. You have to cut the skin off the outside of the big zucchinis because it's so hard, but it sure tasted good. It was still definitely worth eating. It's amazing that these uh, jalapenos are still flowering. <laughs> Well, that concludes the pepper harvest this year. Never in my life have I grown as many peppers as we did this year. I've got bags of them frozen in the freezer. Bags of them chopped up and frozen in the freezer and whole and it's a lot of peppers. I have two pork shoulder roasts that are in here that are smoking at a little over 225. Put them in just before 6.30 this morning. It was still dark out. And hopefully they'll be done tonight around 9 or 10. You can eat it this week. I have a ton of tomatoes that have to be gone through here and picked. But right now I'm just going to dig up. I want to see how many potatoes and how bad the bugs have eaten them. Ah, right, I, because we're doing breakfast for lunch and we don't have any hash browns. So we're going to do fried potatoes. Which I don't need these potatoes for that. We have some inside. But... Uh, I'm the one that does the fried potatoes, so I'm going to cook those up and they take probably 40 to 45 minutes. But let's dig one of the plants up and see what we ended up with. These potatoes were planted about three weeks later than the ones in the potato garden. size red. No bugs on these. There's been nothing that's been chewed up. This is not from a bug. That's they're real clean. Let's dig up one more and see.
some nice potatoes. Look at the size of that one. That's a big red. Looks like the wind is starting to pick up. I'm gonna run inside and make some fried potatoes. I'm gonna bring this one in and show Melissa. <laughs> That's a big potato. Well, it's later in the afternoon now. After lunch, we had some other things to do. I'm gonna go back out and uh, finish digging those potatoes. Probably pick those tomatoes too. We're under a freeze watch tonight starting at 1 a.m. One of the roasts in there, the smaller one, I already hit 160. I took that out, have it wrapped in foil and put back in. And the other one is right around 155. So I'm just waiting for that one to get there and I'll get that one wrapped up also. I think that's bigger than that other one. Holy crap, look at that one. All oh, these are big, look at that. Another one that was above the ground. Oh, look at the size of that russet right there. Do you see that? <laughs> Melissa, when we have a baked potato, I like reds and she likes the russets or the whites and she always wants a big one. You know, if you're gonna do a baked potato, <laughs> I never found one that big. Well, I had seven of the Pontiac Reds and seven plants of the Russets. I can't remember what type they were. And we have 57 of the Reds. Some are big enough to feed three people. Um, and I had, let's see, I had 57 and 45 of the, of the Whites over here. And some of these are big enough to, <laughs> wow. That's weird because I think in the other garden, oh, same thing. I get more of a yield from the reds than you do the whites, but that's still a lot of potatoes. A little over 100 potatoes for 14 plants. That's not bad. And that's not including the real little ones. They're just ones that you can actually do a baked potato with. Now I have to grab the tomatoes and I can call it done. The kale will still be in here, but that stuff will grow until it's snowing out.
probably seven and a half gallons of Romans right there. I could have picked more. There are some that have little blemishes on them, but enough is enough. Well, I think that's a little more than eight gallons right there of the beef steak and the early girl. That's a lot of tomatoes. That's the third time we've picked them and yeah, plenty of them. Awesome potatoes. I think what I'm gonna do is grab the tarp and just pull it over the top of the cabbage over there. I think we're gonna freeze dry another batch of it. But cabbage, you know, it stays a long time but that takes up a lot of room in the fridge. And like for a freeze dryer, like some of these, they're cracked, but you can take that part off. And then if, if I just do that, it can just stay on the ground because then it's going to be, it's going to be chilly this week, you know, 40s, 30s and for the low. But tonight's going to be the real cold night of the next few. I don't know if we're going to carve those pumpkins or not. Never had anybody come here for Halloween, but... Melissa did talk about that. Then we can take the seeds out and use them and whatever else she wants to do. I just opened it up and checked that second roast that I haven't wrapped yet and it's at 159.3. Almost time to wrap it. These can sit here and cure for a few days or longer, whatever. These over here, which you can see on the corners, we've used some of them. These can be bagged and be brought inside now. They could sit out here too. I don't let it freeze in here. I, I always forget like the workshop is heated all, all winter long, you know? So it's not like I have to worry about anything freezing in here. But anyway, these can be bagged like to reclaim some of the workshop space and and get some of the stuff picked up. I mean, it's, it's not a big mess, just need to get stuff put away. wrap this really good and throw it back on. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not going to add any more charcoal to this at all. Once it drops, I mean now it's down, it'll go back up. Once it stops dropping below 225, I'm going to grab it and just put it in the oven. I mean once it's wrapped, <laughs> the smoker's doing nothing but burning fuel. So, but I might as well use up that fuel while it's in there. Huh, I thought I was going to end this one tonight, but I think I'll wait one more day. Got the fence out of this side, and then I even pulled that back corner back. I was just thinking in here, like, I can really push the snow now. But I still got to get rid of this one. The doorway. And then back. At least one right there. Maybe, maybe two. It's really hard to pull this out. This one I pulled out this spring, remember, to get the... Uh, bales out so and that sucked and now it kind of sucked now after all this stuff has grown this year this one's been in here what three years so and it ruins the bottom of the fence somewhat but you know it'll be going against the dirt next year anyway so but i want to get this out of here that's going to be so nice just think about it just coming right in here with the tractor pushing that snow through without having to get around this tight corner doesn't seem very tight when you walk it but when you're in that big old tractor you got to turn here and get going and get by the the boiler. And then last year, I mean, I pushed it way back, but I need to push it back farther because this corner got tight. Like I had to push it and push it. And then I had to, if you can remember, I had to get back in here to get the wood splitter out. And that took me a long time to push that snow. And I just don't like to put that much strain on the tractor. I mean, it's a 1948. She's old. <laughs> I mean, it does anything I ask it to do but I don't like to push it too bad because when it breaks down, then what? I'm snow blowing everything. One down, one to go. I just pulled the second roast out. It's exactly at 203. I did bring them in and put them in the oven. They've been in there for about two hours. This one has. I did two different rubs on them. This one here, the bigger one, I did the original rub that I always do. And on the other one, I did a rub. I, buy, I bought it down in Louisiana. They would, when I would go to Ryan's across the street from the house down there, they would put it on their pork and their chicken on smoked meat Tuesday. It was so good. So I have that one on the other one, and this one is the regular. See if I can do this without a tripod. Look at this, it just falls. It's like pulled pork. We tried some of the other one, it was absolutely delicious. Good morning everybody, 30 degrees, everything is covered in frost.
Looks like I had one plastic bag in the compost area. What a mess. I'm gonna have to pick all that up. I'm gonna go have some lunch and then pull this entryway out and I wanna get that fence back. Uh, two fence posts. It's gonna open it up real nice. Both of the roasts I did yesterday in the out there on the grill smoking it turned out just awesome. And Melissa's potato salad did too. It's just a really good meal.
Okay, everyone. Well, thanks a lot for watching. That's enough for today. The big push is on. When you're in Minnesota, you figure that you better have everything ready by Halloween because if you go back and look it up of the great Halloween snowstorm that ha it happened on Halloween and Sarah was just a baby. Not a baby. It was like her first year maybe going trick-or-treating, so she was little. And when that snow fell, that was it for the rest of the year. We got that one, and then we had a, a storm that came up a little while later that dumped another 20-some inches. And we just never saw bare ground again until spring. So we, with that in mind, it's always like, okay, you got to have everything ready by Halloween, or you better be pretty close to have everything ready. And we are well on our way to making that goal. I will see you guys on the next video.